Hello. Hopefully, you can hear me this time. I just went through the whole thing and found out it did not record audio. Uh, so I'm really hoping that this time it is working. Before I get started on reading everything again, um, I'm hoping that someone can let me know that the audio is working. Sweet. Thank you, Darren. Uh, and thank you for letting me know that uh, the audio wasn't working. There's no mute button or anything like that, so I'm very shocked, uh, and I apologize. Um, I deleted the old one, so let's start up again. Uh, really sorry for the technical issue. Um, was not expecting that to happen, but hey, uh, it will. For those that um, uh, joined the first time, hopefully you come back the second time. All right. Um, so April 30th, Jesus is calling. Um, and once again, thank you very much, Darren, for letting me know that the audio wasn't working for the last one. Hi, Jared. Thanks for joining for the afternoon devotional. Uh, the live stream next to a stream. And uh, yeah, April 30th, uh, when some basic need is lacking, time, energy, money, consider yourself blessed. Your very lack is opportunity to latch onto me in unashamed dependence. When you begin a day with inadequate resources, you must concentrate your efforts on the present moment. This is where you are meant to live, in the present. It is the place where I always await you. Awareness of your inadequacy is a rich blessing, training you to rely wholeheartedly on me. The truth is that self-sufficiency is a myth perpetuated by pride and temporary success. Health and wealth can disappear instantly, as can life itself. Rejoice in your insufficiency, knowing that my power is made perfect in weakness. So that was inspired by uh, two different Bible verses. Uh, thank you for everyone that has come back uh, to actually hear and read along with me. Um, so the two Bible verses. Uh, first one is uh, James 1, 2-3. Consider it pure joy, my brothers, when you face trials of many kinds, because you know the testing of your faith develops providence. For, uh, sorry, perseverance. And then 2 Corinthians 12, 9. And he has said to me, My grace is sufficient for you. Power is... For power is perfected in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I will rather boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. And that's one of the reasons I always talk about being dyslexic because I'm still blown away that this is one of the things that I've been doing in reading scripture uh, and um, what not in order to connect and help us all kind of connect together and to focus on God. I think it's a crazy thing and I'm very happy in it and like yeah reading has never been my strong suit um, ever so how God meets and uses um, our weaknesses for his glory it's an awesome thing. So what are you lacking today and how could God meet you in that need and a lot of um, a lot of our needs sometimes um, like I needed to know that the audio wasn't working uh, <laughs> in the first run through but a lot of our, our needs and our lacks and our feeling of lacking is looking at what people have around us and then going, but I don't have that, and I want that. And not really appreciating what God has given us and allowed us to have. Um, yeah. So uh, we are reading uh, Proverbs 30 once again. Um, and there is this uh, section that reframes uh, Jesus um, going back uh, 1 to 4. So I'll read the whole thing. Hi, Amber. Thanks for joining. Um, and then I will... Um, uh, 
reread one to four in this reframing Jesus part. And since I just did this, I'm going to be like, oh no, am I doing it again? Good afternoon, and congrats once again on passing. Uh, we're happy for you. Um, yeah, so Proverbs 30 is where, where we will be reading from. Uh, hey, Kathy. Um, so Proverbs 30, uh, just starting at uh, verse 1 and going all the way through. All right. If uh, Once again, if you need a Bible, you need um, uh, use the Bible app. Uh, that's a good one, New Version Bible, uh, Bible Gateway, if you're on a, a desktop or a laptop. Um, but yeah, if you want a physical Bible, let me know. All right, so uh, without further ado, Proverbs 30. The saying of Agar, son of Jekka, contained this message. I am weary, O God. I am weary and worn out, O God. I am too stupid to be human and I lack common sense. I have not mastered human wisdom, nor do I know the Holy One. Who but God goes up to heaven and comes down? Who holds the wind in his fist? Who wraps the oceans in his cloak? Who has created the whole wide world? What is his name? And his son's name? Tell me if you know. Every word of God proves true. He's a shield to all who come to him for protection. Do not add to his word, or he may rebuke you and expose you as a liar. O oh God, I beg two favors from you. Let me have them before I die. First, help me not to tell a lie. Second, give me neither poverty or riches. Give me just enough to satisfy my needs. For if I grow rich, I may deny you and say, Who is Lord? And if I'm too poor, I may steal and thus insult God's holy name. Never slander a worker to the employer, or a person will curse you and you will pay for it. Some people curse their father and do not thank their mother. They are pure in their own eyes, but they are filthy and unwashed. They look proudly among... A, they look proudly around, casting disdains, disdainful glances. They have teeth like swords and fangs like knives. They devour the poor from the earth and the needy from among humanity. The leech has two suckers that cry out, More! More! There are three things that are never satisfied. No, four that never say enough. The grave the barren womb, the thirsty desert, and the blazing fire. The eye that mocks a father and despises a mother's instructions will be plucked out by ravens of the valley and eaten by vultures. There are three things that amaze me, no four, that I do not understand. How an eagle glides through the sky, how snakes slither on the rocks, how a ship navigates the ocean, and how a man loves a woman. An adulterous woman consumes a man and then wipes her mouth and says, what's wrong with that? Hey, Jasmine. There are things, uh, we're reading through Proverbs 30 and we're at uh, verse 21. There are three things that make the earth tremble. No, four, that it cannot endure. A slave who becomes king. An overbearing fool who prospers. A bitter woman who finally gets a husband. And a servant girl who supplements her mistress. There are four things on this earth that are small, but usually wise. Ants. They aren't strong, but they store up food all summer. Rock badgers. They are powerful, but they make their homes among the rocks. Locusts. They have no king, 
but they march in formation. Lizards. They are easy to catch, but are found even in king's palaces. Sorry. Hey, Jay. Um, they're found even in king's palaces. There are three things that walk with stately stride. No, four that strut about. The lion, the king of the animals, who won't turn aside for anything. The strutting rooster, the male goat, a king as he leads his army. If you have been a fool by being proud or plotting evil, cover your mouth in shame. As the beating of cream yields butter, and the striking the nose causes bleeding, so stirring anger causes quarrels. So, um, I'm going to reread uh, 1 to 4 and then the reframing Jesus part. After the call came in, is my audio still okay? hope so. A little thumbs up if my audio is still working. I do not know. Alright, awesome. Thank you, Darren. I was worried that the phone call might have messed it up. Alright, so one to four. Uh, the sayings of Angor, son of Jekka, contain this message. I am weary, O oh God. I am weary and worn out, O oh God. I am too stupid to be human and I lack common sense. I have not mastered human wisdom, nor do I know the Holy One. But who but God goes up to heaven and comes back down? Who holds the wind in his fist? Who wraps the oceans in his cloak? Who has created the whole wide world? And what is his name? And his son's name? Tell me if you know. So, uh, that's uh, Proverbs 30, 1 to 4. Hey, Barbara. Um, and then this kind of gets uh, a little bit reframed uh, here in this little section. So, I'll read that out. Uh, Proverbs 30, 1 to 4. You can know the Creator. Historians believe that Agar was most likely a sage, a wise man. He probably had his own band of disciples. Imagine him coming home at the end of a long day and trying his best to teach a small group of eager students. He can't believe the questions they ask, tough questions that he simply couldn't answer. He knows his limitations, and right now he feels utterly stupid. Who could possibly understand God and how he works? Agar can't very well travel up to heaven and find all the answers, then come back to earth and enlighten his students. No one can do that. He was right in his assumptions at that time. No human could possibly understand God's creative process. But that all changed when Jesus left behind his life in heaven to enter our world as a man. He entered the world in the form of a baby, in the form of a baby fully human, yet completely God. He has been he was to be called Emmanuel, which literally means God with us. Matthew one twenty three. The same Jesus exists before anything was ever made, because God created everything with him and for him. Colossians one, fifteen to seventeen. So the answer is yes, Agar. The creator has a name, and that name is Jesus. Um yeah, so hopefully you guys got something out of it. Um, if the enemy was trying to discourage me by having my audio not work for uh, an unknown reason, it didn't work. Uh, still just got right back into it. Although, Darren, I know you're going to like this. Especially during the second read through, I was reading and talking so moistly. <laughs> and I'm like, ah. I'm a moist talker, at least while I'm looking down and reading. Yeah. And I'm super noticing it because of my headphones. Um, but yeah, there's a couple things that uh, jumped out to me as well. Hopefully, if you guys had anything jump out and you want to share it, please share it. Uh, I'll be looking through the comments and hopefully I'll catch it and be able to read it out. 
I know a lot of people just might have this on in a different window though and not be able to uh, to read. So um, I really liked the whole, there are three things, no, four. <laughs> um, I don't know why, I just really, really like that. Um, and like the grave, the barren room, the thirsty desert, the blazing fire. There's a lot of things in our life um, and for Agar, those are the, the things that he noticed that just can never say enough. Um, going back to uh, the devotional, I think there's a few different things that we could put on our list nowadays. Um, you know, our, our, our lust uh, for things uh, is definitely high up there. Um, our money and our, all of that jazz. It seems like that's never enough. Um, but I just liked how it's there. There's three things. No, four. And then you almost could feel them like saying, no, 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 five, no, six, no, like ten. And like you could almost see that going on as he's going through things. And I just, I like that for some reason. Um, it was good. Um, the, and then like the thing, like this wise teacher. And, like, there are three things that amaze me and that he doesn't understand. And the last one being, oh, man, loves a woman. How, like, a lot of times love just doesn't make sense. But it's it's real. But it's hard to, to really figure that out. And, uh, you know, it's... I, I don't know. I like that. Um, the uh, description of... The eye of a mocker, uh, the eye that mocks a father and despises a mother's instructions, will be plucked out by ravens in, of the valley and eaten by vultures. Um, the imagery there is very visceral uh, and painful, and thinking about it is not pleasant. But it's, you know, in a world where your parents actually have the best in mind for you and they're looking out for you and if you choose to throw that stuff away then people are going to take advantage of you people are going to aim to hurt you take advantage of you and you know that's the case so if you don't have earthly loving parental figures um then you gotta look towards god uh but yeah, I don't know. I just, I like that they didn't really sugarcoat it. They said it poetically in a very disturbing way. And a lot of times when we uh, poetically put things, we make it sound all like nice and like, oh yeah, nice and flowery. But this is like, no, the ravens are going to pluck out your eyes and ravens are going to tear out your flesh. And it's just like, yeah, all right, that's pretty strong imagery. Maybe we should listen to that. And uh, like a lot of uh, the Psalms, this one starts off just very emotional. The whole, I am too stupid to be human and I lack common sense. Here's this wise man, this teacher, that's made it through things and he's just feeling so stupid. <laughs> um, and I think we've all been there. One, not only just feeling stupid, but also, um, feeling inadequate, especially in things that we're good with. Uh, and especially, I think a lot of us feel that way with Christians. Because once again, you look at how some other Christians worship or their musical skills or this side or the other, and they're like, well, I'm bringing nothing to the kingdom of God. That's of value. Um, and yet, this person that's feeling this heaviness and this weight of utter failure is put into this book and that feeling of utter failure leads him to asking one of the most important questions. What is his name and his son's name? Tell me if you know. And thankfully we live in a time where we have Jesus. Oh, yeah. Oh, and 
like the other thing with ravens too um like they're, they're giant birds but um there's a so a lot of you know uh, tony and tony's son jeremy he worked on a tv show uh called travel the road and it was an evangelism show and they went up to the mountains and they went to the sky burial place and it was um it's a very powerful episode but once again yeah the birds are just doing that right um and we have physical ravens not as much here but um all right yeah please i i'd be up for that um yeah and we have a lot of metaphorical ra uh ravens as well right um yeah and I really, I, one of the things I really, really like about that first part too is all of that comes down to a way that it's like knowing God. And we live in this time post Jesus where we not only have the opportunity to pray and communicate with God through prayer, we don't have to go to a special place, but we have his 66 book love book this 66 uh book love letter that we can just turn to and read and discover his heart the creator of the universe today has given us something that for thousands of years they did not have and people study it and they love it and other people have it collect dust and i am neither rich nor poor in that I'm probably closer to the poorer side with how um, little I actually read my words. So thank you for enabling me to um, read, not only with you, but just to read it myself. Uh, it's been good going through it on a daily devotional. Even days like today when I had to do it twice because the audio didn't work. Hi, Samantha. Coming through right at the end of it. So, um, today's devotional was about having a lack, a lack of resources and needing to lean on God. And then the big takeaway from the Bible verse for me was, um, oh, two things. You can make a list and try to have it be this comprehensive list, uh, of things, but you can always add the, oh wait, there's one more. Um that Agar did in that list of uh, there are three things, no four um, there's no comprehensive list of everything and sometimes the wisest thing to do is just be like alright, what I have what I'm doing where I am, it's not sufficient enough and I need to turn and look to God to help me get through this and in those times ask what his name is that could be one of the wisest things that we can do even though the answer to the question might already be known sometimes it's still just good to ask hey God who are you why do you love me why do you want to use me I so suck why would you use me and God will find ways of answering that in a way that we're really accept and understand and hold on to um so yeah thank you guys very much once again for joining uh tomorrow it's the end of proverbs uh looking forward to that it's the start of may um it's kind of crazy don't know when all of this is going to end uh i'm excited for it and nervous for it and they've knocked down the tv so it's on an angle but that's okay um yeah, uh, any prayer requests uh, or anything like that, you can comment below. Uh, you can private message me. Um, if you would like some prayer and you don't want to say what it is, just hit the hit a like button, um, and I will make sure to, to pray for you guys. Uh, once again, thank you guys so much for joining. Uh, hopefully, this helps guide your afternoon uh, to help focus your minds and your hearts on God a little bit more. So let me pray, and then um, we can say good day. AJC, awesome Jesus Christ, um, 
once again, I want to lift up the people uh, who um, have flooding and are at high risk of floods. Um, yeah, uh, it's not fun in a normal time, and I can't imagine during this time. So I pray for safety and everything for them. There was some article about a bunch of people uh, leaving home. There was a young family who recently bought a house, and now um, they're they're trying to fight back the flood. Uh, so I pray for them, uh, for all of our frontline workers. Um, with um, extra weather, the hospitals can normally be busy. And I thank you that the emergency rooms and stuff like that are a lot less busy right now, and I pray for all the nurses and everything. And for the ones that are going out to the nursing homes, Lord, I thank you so much. Oh, the nursing homes in Orangeville so far have been kept safe, but the ones surrounding us uh, haven't. And I pray for all the workers and all the people in the home and protections and everything for them. I thank you that signs are showing that we have actually been able to flatten this curve, that this global response has had some success. And uh, I pray that you can help us get through today, even though we might be lacking this side or the other. I was lacking toilet paper, and someone brought toilet paper by my house. Um, you know, and I pray that a lot of people can can have you fill their needs, whether that's fill their needs through other people, or um, it's just you weeding them and, and filling their needs. I pray for health and safety. It's springtime, um, so sometimes there's there is some sickness that's still going around, Lord, and I pray that uh, that you can help us overcome anything that's in our path. I pray that we can find ways of being physically active and healthy as well. And for everybody on the front line, everybody that's still working, I thank you for them and their, their dedication. I pray for protection. Um, I was talking with a business owner last night about how uh, some people had to, to leave for family reasons or whatever. And now they're working uh, seven days a week trying to keep their business afloat. And uh, hiring people during this time is really difficult and um, yeah so I lift up all the the business owners too that um, are trying to figure out what to do in all the small businesses in town and around the world um, I pray for more guidance and wisdom and I thank you that some of us were getting into a routine and for those that are going a little bit crazy Lord I pray that you can find ways of using your people your body to um, help them with their mental health. And, uh, yeah. Thank you very much, Lord. Amen. Alright. Well, thank you guys very much for joining. Um, I do appreciate you guys. And, um, yeah, please send me the, the high-res image of that. I feel like I had a bunch of different Raven verses pop up in my head, and I kind of want to do a bit of research on Ravens in the Bible now. I wonder if um, the Bible Project has done that. That's just a great resource, by the way. I really, um, if you have a, a topic or a subject uh, that you want to communicate with others or just get a bit of a deeper understanding, the Bible Project is brilliant. Uh, I think it's one of my, like, I've used it at the door for our doorpost Bible studies. Um, and I've, yeah, it's a really, really really one done well done series but yeah anyways besides uh you know selling all that stuff out or you know, selling marketing things that i enjoy uh i will bid you all a good day uh sorry once again for the technical issues in the first video and um yeah hopefully things will be good and remember you're famous enough because you're known by god all right later and thank you for the kind words there, Kathy. Good day.